Right, everybody that, um, we're just here because me and Laura are constantly online and stuff and we're not allowed to gather outside. Um, but we believe the real pandemic in Scotland is child abuse and the hidden child abuse that no one hears about. Now, we're all in lockdown and stuff just now, but there's children being seriously exploited in Glasgow and they're being exploited and prostituted out through flats across Glasgow. Um, so Nic Nicola Sturgeon said that we'll, we can find other ways to get this out, um, but it's the truth and it's public information um, and we're not allowed to raise awareness at the moment, so that's why we're persistent in coming here, because this stuff needs spoke about. Um, so at the end of the day, we're here to raise awareness about paedophiles. Why do paedophiles have more rights than us? Why do we? Why do they have more rights at the moment to move around the country freely, and we're all stuck in lockdowns in the house? Why are the the kids are all roaming the streets of nowhere to go? They're hanging about in parks and stuff. They're drinking, and they're they're, they're in danger of exploitation. There's predators hanging about these parks. Now we've had at least six girls telling us that once they've had a wee drink, like these guys just appear from nowhere. Like, and then sometimes they end up that drunk, they end up in flats. There was one in Deniston just recently, and the wee girl was only 14. She ended up in a flat in Deniston, woke up, and she'd been raped off about six guys. Um, so, but this is, this is real. Our children are in real danger of sexual exploitation and trafficking at the moment. And it's going on the, online, they're all stuck in their bedrooms, they're isolated. You don't know who they're speaking to, see when they're sneaking out to go and meet their pals. They're not, they're not always doing that. Um, so, and, right, there was a, an operation in Glasgow called Operation Sarah, um, and it was grooming gangs in Glasgow. Um, now, we are exposing, it's, this is not no racist at all. I mean, there's Scottish grooming gangs and there's Scottish paedophiles that operate for the Four Corners, but these ones were all asylum seekers for the Kurdish, Afghan, Egyptian, Moroccan, Turkish, Pakistan and Iraqi. Um, there was 55 suspected members, 46 positive IDs, and briefings from 2016 operations are stored in the archives of Glasgow's Child Protection Committee. The Child Abuse Investigation Unit, D.I. Sarah Taylor, there was 24 girls identified. When asked why the police kept it a secret, the, the police and the Scottish Government kept this a secret from the Scottish public for three years. We only got to find out last year about this. Um, this is still operating, this is what we are raising awareness about. These guys haven't went anywhere, they've not been deported. There was 14 guys deported out of 70 odds. Now, there's still, so there's still like, what, 60 odds of them kicking about Glasgow, uh, operating, grooming their children, exploiting their children. So, when, when the police were asked why they kept it secret, they said, this is what they said, they said, they have to do what's best. What is best is awareness to keep the children safe. Yeah. Right, yeah. no, I'm saying that so it's best is awareness to keep the children safe. Yeah. But they said they had to do what's best and it wasn't in the public interest to know this it's stuff. Now, everybody in Glasgow that's got children, it is in your public interest to know this stuff. Because these people uh, are uh, operating. Do these guys own flats? Like, do some of them have got... I know one get one of these guys has got 26 flats across Glasgow and some of them in Falkirk. Some of them in Alawa, so they're scattered across the whole of Scotland. Uh, wait, no. These kids are taken to Glasgow to there when they disappear from the care homes for a week at a time. They're up in Alawa, they're oh, up in Falkirk. The care homes for letting the harm! Stop him. You know what? Right. Um, in fact, I probably won't even need to read it. I read it this morning. We've made a freedom of information request um, to about the numbers of child exploitation in Scott and Glasgow from 2016 to 2020. We were met with a response to say that it cost two, more than £600 for this information, so it can't be given. So we're not allowed to know the actual two numbers of the children that's been sexually exploited across, across Glasgow. We've, we've literally been told it costs too much money to tell us. Now, I, we believe, we, we've, got, we've got kids. Morris got a 14 year old, I've got a 19 and a 20 year old. They're no safe in this country. Um, 
Right, so nobody wants to talk about the Rotherham style grooming guy in Glasgow. It's a systematic cover up. A, um, a relative of a Glasgow victim. It is really our worst nightmare. This is from this is from a, a relative of a victim that we've spoken to. It really is our worst nightmare. It's a Rochdale and Rotherham type stuff, and it's happening right here in Glasgow. Yeah. It's not a new issue. In 2015, a report on Rotherham style grooming gangs outlined severe failings in the system to deal with these criminals, as well as not protecting the victims and the vulnerable. Someone said, with the helplessness of the, victim, the victims and the relatives being evident, as well as many warnings of these ever-present and widespread child abuse rings, one cannot help but notice that there's a big silence. Now, you can't help but notice it is totally silenced. Okay. And it's real, it's real and it must be addressed. And that's why me and Laura are here, because this stuff, we need to raise awareness and we need people to make requests and write letters. So, shame on the SNP for letting this continue. It's time we had a government in place willing to address the problems without fear of being called racist. It's bringing convictions against child rapists and race and if, if bringing convictions against child rapists is racist, then this country is falling into despair faster than I would ever have thought. Staying quiet is only contributing to this issue, and it can't continue. We can't keep being quiet. The Glasgow Four Corners on the 27th of September 2017, there was a grooming ring probe. It's rife child exploitation. The victim's now 17, she was 14 at the time, and there was other girls involved too. The girl at 17 thinks, still thinks the guy's her boyfriend, and she won't say what happened to her. Now these young girls are being, like, the 13, 14 in care homes, they're getting off of mobile phones, and like, they, get, they, get, they gain the trust of these wee girls, and then they're their boyfriend, and then that's when the, the trafficking starts. They start trafficking in room parts in Glasgow. And she even tried to get these girls to give evidence at 17 and 18. It's, it's, the girls still believe that these guys love them. Even though they've been raped off like a hundred guys by this time, they still believe that these guys are their boyfriends and they love them. Because they've never known love. They've never known any kind of love or affection. And these guys prey on young girls like that. So, um, so the victim's now 17. The girl was taken to Craig Lee Drive Street, uh, Craig Lee Street in Deniston for sex with mul multiple men, along with several other teenagers. And it's ha that was there was a, an arrest made last week in Deniston. It was the same guys. It's happening in a big way in Glasgow. Nobody seems to be sto stopping. Um, at all, these girls believe these guys are their boyfriends. Operation Cotswold set to focus on the Muslim refugees who were abusing young girls in care homes. There was 26 victims identified, but no prosecutions at all. So there was 26 victims of this, and not one person get prosecuted. In 2013, Operation Dash tackled the role on the Muslim taxi services in the fast food places. And um, I can't swear. <coughs> and grooming and sexual abuse of young girls. It focused on the Strathclyde region and the city centre. Dash found girls as young as 10 were being sexually abused in the back of takeaway shops and in taxis. There was 84, 84 victims, 27 suspects, and only three guys were arrested. Javid Amhoun, the fast food restaurant guy, he got six years in prison, he's now out. He's now out, out of all of them, out of the 27 guys that were involved in it. One did it, he got six years, he done five years in a month, and he got out. Um, from prison he tried to talk to a 15 year old saying um, her, um, telling the wee girl and this same guy before he just got out of prison he was talking to this wee 15 year old in prison and he was asking her to say the baby she was expecting was his so that when he got out so he was still manipulating her in prison and she was pregnant through one of the traffickers but no him but he was trying to get her to say that was his baby so they could stay in the country she? Um, she was 13 when they started abusing her. Exactly, they don't ask questions. They don't, they they, what they say them. is these girls are troubled to care homes Aye. and they choose to do it. No. They choose to go and do this themselves. They're, they're looking for this kind of attention. 
exactly. And the lasses go missing for like a week at a time. They're being, and they come back with new trainers and mobile phones and hundreds of money and fags and whatever else. Um, so out of the three investigations that have taken place, there was 154 four victims in Glasgow. So 154 Scottish young girls in Glasgow were victims of these three tra uh, grooming gangs. Um, and identified victims and at least 71 perpetrators. So out of the 71 guys involved in these grooming gangs, only four get prison sentences. And only one actually went to jail, the rest just get put in registers. Um, so the serious problem, right, so as well as Glasgow and you've got all these grooming gangs, child trafficking across the world is a much more serious problem than anybody could imagine. Um, there's 2 million children a year get sucked into child trafficking worldwide. 2 million children. It's already, it's already taking over the arms trade and it is now about to take over the drugs trade. So it's in par with the drugs trade, child trafficking in, in the world. Um, so in any way, I wanted to end that on. Nicola Sturgeon's going to do a march in May for independence. Well, I think that we should march as a, a country as Scotland for our children yeah. and for freedom, for our own freedom, freedom of being able to speak, freedom to raise awareness, no fun, freedom huh? to protect our children and basically get something done in this country because as I've already did in the lives I'm not going to, this, these paedophile rings are operating in many levels, it's not just the street levels, you then have the legal system and you then have Man, above that again, uh, she's allowing it. She's allowed, no, she's, just, she's, she's yeah, not doing anything about it. And I also, listen, I also wanted to say, um, we were talking about Govan Hill, right? We're not allowed to talk about that because apparently the people are moving, that they're getting watched. But these people moved, these people have been there for 16 years. They moved long ago, these are the same guys that own flats across the whole of Scotland. They own flats in Falkirk. But I've had a person, Goma, I know. Well, that's that's what the kids dumb. the rich kids get to hang about there at night, but they're getting trafficked in the city that's centre, and dumb. all the young golf kids and that hang about Goma at night in the town. Yeah, and that's because that's closed down. Cause you know about the cat house and the yeah. Yeah. Especially if somebody approaches you with a so, I just wanted to end on see these grooming gangs, right? Yeah, I, I get contacted with a guy, but he wants to stay anonymous because he's have already the he stays in a wee village in Falkirk. And there's an Asian guy moved in to the wee village, and he con um, the Asian guy approached. He was drunk one day, and the there was a woman in the shop, and he asked a seven-year-old kid to go home with him. He said, "Come on and try to pull the wee girl out the shop." So that got reported to the police, and then um, the, some of the neighbours tried to do something about it. I can't really say where it is. It discloses a guy, but it's a wee small village in Falkirk, and there's Glasgow taxis. Oh, at this address constantly um, and they drop kids off at night the guy doesn't have any kids of his own but the neighbours have said like there's like there's young kids as young as seven and eight getting dropped off in Glasgow taxis outside his house they're in a wee village in Falkirk it has been reported to the police there's nothing been done about it yet um, but it was just to raise awareness and try and get that out there because these neighbours have been through hell up there and they're absolutely terrified that their kids are in danger the neighbours try to approach the guy that's staying, the Asian guy that's staying up there and he drives a Glasgow taxi and he got all his family from Glasgow to come up in taxis and threaten them all so they can't really do anything like that either but this guy, the, the guy said that he, um, it breaks his heart and he's basically going to send me video footage and that but those young kids get dropped off and stay overnight and then there's taxis going in at this flat all night so that's another thing I wanted to raise awareness about um, so as I said, the police are saying Govan Hill's moving away, it moved away long ago. Like it's it's extended the whole of Scotland, these people operate from. Um, as I said, there was one in Deniston, there was one in Mary Hill, there was one in the south side somewhere. Sorry man, man. What do you mean by that that didn't go there anymore? No, who? Hill? No, they're still there. I'm just saying that as well as there, there's a base there. And they right, operate uh, through there, uh, and they, they have babies there, and they traffic uh, them. Right. They're new in every city in Scotland. Oh, yeah, they're in Falkirk, they're in Alaba, 
Because right. these guys have got flats, but they've got property. They've got property oh, years ago, so they've got property Roll everywhere. On, on. So I, I just want to end it on to say what me and Laura are going to do. So we're going to write to the Prosecutor Fiscal. Um, I can't remember somebody will. Um, we're going to write to the Prosecutor Fiscal and ask them why there's no investigations getting taken into these things and why they're refusing to investigate it, whether it's their fault or whether it's Nicola Sturgeon's. Yay. Because if somebody's responsible for non, no investigations, but also, as you know Jane and Sandy, Jane and Sandy have just refused £80,000 for the Scottish Government because they were silenced them money. so that they wouldn't be able to talk about their abusers. Well, they've refused that, so we're going to take quarriers to court. We're going to take quarriers to court and they're going to take them to court themselves and the Scottish Government for the years of abuse in the orphans, orphanages in Scotland. Um, we're also raising awareness about the boarding schools just now because that's part of the Scottish Child Abuse Inquiry that's suspended. It's been suspended and it's in Dumplain. Nicola Sturgeon's moving to Dumplain. Um, the next part of the Scottish Child Abuse Inquiry is in Dumplain and it's the Queen Victoria School. Every Scottish boarding school, there's been child abuse. Yep. I'm all, we're also going right to the Prosecutor Fiscal about Holly Gregg and ask why there was no investigation into the Holly Gregg case and represent the evidence. Um, and we're also going right to the Prosecutor Fiscal and ask why there was no investigation into Reese Bonner. Yes! Um, yeah. So we're going to write to the prosecutor first go and ask about Reese because there's no police investigation. So they never... We don't know if it's the prosecutor first go that's responsible or if it's the police that's responsible for that. But somebody's responsible for no lodging an investigation and we need to hold them to account first before we can ask for another investigation into that, whether it be late or not. Um, and also, I just wanted to end it on, right, see, we know there's coronavirus, right, but I am totally against masks. Kids shouldn't be learning that masks are normal. Masks are for, like, bank robbers and stuff like that. And I'm not having the psychological damage that it's having in young kids. Nobody's aware of the masks. There's no reason for these masks. The masks don't work. There's no any protection. Get All they're doing up. is teaching your kids yeah. can't you see facial expressions. Yeah, they can't yeah. see if you're scared, angry, sad. And then they don't know the dangers of masks. If somebody runs into a shop and robs it, wow. our kids aren't even going to react. They've been conditioned ah, that it's acceptable and that it's normal. And it's no normal. Kids need to be able to see faces. They need to be able to identify people. Oh, if a child oh, was kidnapped, how's they going to identify their kidnapper oh, if they've got a mask on? Yeah. The canny, what did they look like? Oh, his brown eyes. Come on, this is not on. We need to stop. Right, fair enough, social distance, whatever they can do, whatever they want. But this mask needs to stop. So the, the psychological effects our kids are going to have for years to come. Our kids all have nightmares about that. Like it's not on. Kids need to be able to see who's who and what's happening around about them. It's part of their psychological makeup. It's there's no reason. It's shocking. The reason that the damage far outweighs there are far out ways, like the good in wearing masks, so like for kids it's not on and it needs to stop. And that's, so that's me, I'm done. If anybody else wants to speak, then feel free, then they want to talk.